Hello, and welcome back, TCAN Clan, to another video. So today we're going to be doing a solo speed run of Heroic Drac Theron's Keep, and this is going to be the first video in the series where I'm going to show you how to quickly get through Heroic Dungeons solo. Now, you may be asking yourself, what's the point of doing this solo to begin with? And there's a couple reasons. The first is dungeon materials like Frozen Orbs and Abyss Crystals have really skyrocketed in price because a lot of people have stopped running Heroics, and this is just an easy way to farm them and gives about 700 gold an hour if done correctly. The second is maybe you're like me and you have a couple of vaults that still need gear from heroics and this is a really easy way to obtain that gear without having to worry about getting it ninja'd or not getting invited to the group because of a bunch of tryhards told you that you don't have the gear score to get in. Now, before we get started, there are some prerequisites that you're going to need if you want to do solo heroics. The first thing is you need engineering for all the tools and gadgets that it gives you, like rocket boots, gnomish cloaking device, and mine amplification dish. And frankly, engineering is the best profession in Wrath anyway, so you should probably have this one. The second thing, if you want to do this as a gold farm, is you're going to want enchanting as either a secondary profession, or you're going to need an alt or friend with you during the heroic. And here you can see I have my alt ready for work. Ready to work. Lastly, because a lot of people were asking what gear I was using, I'll leave a link in the description to gear, talents, and glyphs if you want to check them out. Also, if you dig this kind of content and find it helpful or entertaining, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it really does help me out. So starting the pull here, the idea of the speedrun is going to be to skip as many packs as possible, but we are going to need to kill the first couple of starting packs. The first pull isn't too difficult as you can see, but the following two pulls are a bit of a challenge. The second pull is a bit more difficult, and this is where we're going to want to use a lot of our cooldowns. We'll start by killing the reanimator since he does all magic damage, and he's definitely the easiest to kill, and we'll want to keep moving since the soul mage drops a lot of black circles on the ground that does AoE damage. After the reanimator's dead, we'll kill the soul mage since he actually does the most damage here. Since this third pack has two soul mages in it, and it'll be the hardest pack, I wanted to save my mind control cap here to mind control the reanimator who's a humanoid and turn it into a two pack instead of a three pack. The same thing here applies though where we're going to want to use a lot of our defensive cooldowns to keep ourselves up. Now that we got those three packs cleared, we're going to be doing mostly skipping from here. For this first skip, we're going to need our Rocket Boots Extreme and a Gnomish Cloaking Device, but we'll only be using the Gnomish Cloaking Device first. The next skip, we're going to use our Rocket Boots Extreme and an 18 second Invisibility Pot. Once we get to this point, we're going to want to change our Rocket Boots Extreme for our Nitro Boots and make sure that all of our defensive gear is on because this is going to be the hardest part here.
When we turn this corner, we're going to want to use our Nitro Boots to run past the Raptor Packs. And you can see here that I get really unlucky with the pat because he's the furthest possible distance, meaning I'm going to be getting hit all the way up the steps here. And once we get to the top, we're going to want to jump on this catapult since it is a reset spot. Also all up here, we're going to aggro the pack on the left because for some strange reason, when we aggro this pack and it resets, that blue guy is going to start pathing away. Also, one of the raptors here didn't reset, so I figured it'd just be easier to kill it instead of waiting for it to reset, so that's what I go ahead and do here. And now that the big blue guy is padding away, we're going to go ahead and pull this pack when they're all low health and then kill them. So next we're going to want to kill the padding blue guy, but he's now chained with the mobs on the left, so we're going to use the same reset trick here to get him unchained. So once that big pack pulls, we can go ahead and reset them, and once they reset, we can jump down and he'll now be unchained from them. And here while I'm waiting for my invisibility potion to come off cooldown, I'm actually moving my alt to be in range of the boss so I can go ahead and disenchant the gear. And for your alt, you can go ahead and just stand right under where the end drop down point is and that'll be in range. Now this is going to be the last mob that we kill and he's not chained to anything so you don't need to worry about other mobs pulling. And with a couple seconds to spare on our invisibility potion cooldown, we're going to go ahead and use our rocket boots and then invisibility potion to the last boss. The last boss is mostly tank and spank, and there is a part where he takes your skin and wears it like Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs, but you just mash 1 and 4 and you should get through it with no problem.
And there you have it, one dead boss and about 250 gold worth of items. Now if you found this kind of guide helpful, I would really appreciate it if you guys liked and subscribed to the video, and I will catch y'all on the next one.